Hi all, I want to do a little bit more basic retro game coding, this time with some new techniques I've come across that will help uh, with performance. Check it out. What prompted this video is something by Joseph, uh, excuse the pronunciation if I got that wrong, from Joseph's Retro Bits, where he's uh, come up with a way to use a call to the kernel to scroll uh, text characters downwards and as you can see towards the end there and when we get back to the beginning of the uh, screen there it scrolls down that's uh, that's what I'm talking about that's from Joseph's retro bits I've added to that uh, the ability to shift everything to the right and to the left so the combination of that has got our aliens moving moving back and forth on the screen the cool thing is, I'm doing this in BASIC. This isn't even compiled BASIC. This is just interpreted the, uh, the default way the Commodore 64 runs BASIC. And the performance of this, given the slow BASIC performance you typically see with the Commodore 64, I found remarkable, which is why I thought I'll see if I can use it to make a, a simple game. I'll start with how I've created some of the graphics and how I've moved it around the screen. The aliens are just stored in string variables, so a1 string is this guy. And to move him around, I'm using I string and J string. I to insert and J I'm using to delete. And the way I'm you know, using it is um, these characters represent keystrokes in effect. This is a bit like a keyboard macro, if you like. And uh, they, they're just far from intuitive. These are just the characters that uh, the Commodore 64 uses to represent the character, the keys uh, used. So for instance, here for the insert, I would insert, space, move down, and move back. And then uh, I'll show you how I then go through and do the same thing again. So insert, space, down, and back. And that's how I've moved him uh, one character to the right. And to move him back, it's backspace, down. Oh, I've messed him up a bit there, but I think you get the idea. There he is. And so that's the insert uh, string. That's the delete string. In this case, I've actually had to use a character. Have to use a character string for the uh, the backspace. Then I use a for next loop to uh, uh, make i two string twenty three instances of this um, key sequence, if you like, to go down the whole screen and either shift everything to the right or to the left. So i two string shifts everything to the right. J2 string shifts everything to the left. I'll explain the rest of the code in the CBM PRG Studio where it's far more uh, easily uh, easy to read because of the, the layouts a lot better. But uh, the reason I showed you the uh, character string section on the Commodore 64 is this is what, lo what it looks like on the CBM PRG Studio. It's even uh, less intuitive than what we saw on the CBM on the sorry on the Commodore 64. So I'll just go through the um, functionality. It's, it's it's pretty straightforward, and uh, it's not a full uh, functioning game, but um, I've gone as far as I can while maintaining some reasonable performance, and uh, I'll expand on that later. I'm not going to go through a lot of the functionality, such as uh, how sprites work um, and that sort of thing, but uh, I'll just focus on the, the the main functionality about the motion of the graphics that uh, is, I think, the key thing in, in this uh, bit of code today. So I set up the video memory and color memory. Um, I'm setting up a black border and screen. I'm setting up the sprites and I'm reading the sprite data using the read command, which I've got down the end here. This is the uh, uh, sprite data for the uh, the alien ship and also the missile that uh, is fired. There's our alien ship there. And where were we so? Once we um, set up the sprites, we then uh, set up the, uh, the the characters. That character section I just showed you is called here. Um, we've got a, some very basic sound effects, some explosion sounds that I've set up. Um, I won't go into how to uh, program the the SID, but um, it's all it's all there if you want to go through it. And the intro screen is at 2,000. Let's have a quick look at that. Um, 
that doesn't make a lot of sense. Actually, I might just pop back into where it would look on the Commodore 64. Might make a little bit more sense. So, as you can see, Petsky Raiders. These are just the characters, the ASCII characters. And if you want to learn more about that, I've got uh, another video on my channel that goes into uh, into how I set up Petsky characters and how they're used in these games. So, back up to here. So that sets up the intro screen. And hit, this is where we start the uh, the new game. So we set the score to zero, number of ships is three, the game level it starts at level one, and uh, this is when uh, you go to a new level. We set up uh, the x and y coordinates, and these are just some counters. These are some functions that uh, enable the visibility of the sprites and their location. Okay, so we set up a, the the new level. We clear the screen, and okay, this. Uh, clears any collisions. We do some collision detection. Now this is um, a call as part of Joseph's Retro Bits trick to uh, to do the uh, vertical anima uh, scrolling of the characters. And if we go uh, to 51, under what do we do there? We just set up the, the banner where we've got the score, high score uh, details along the, the top of the screen, the header if you like. So we displayed the header along the top of the screen now we actually go print all the aliens on the screen. So these uh, a, th uh, a string three, two, and one are just a line of those strings that I've set up previously of the aliens. Just pop them back. Uh, so if we print, that's what that looks like. And we've got the three different aliens and uh, they're all printed on the screen here. Now this is the beginning of the main loop. Now it's it's not going to be intuitive but uh, this is where I clear an explosion when we uh, shoot one of the aliens and uh, um, I won't go into that. I'll, I might add that in later. Uh, it'll make more sense. So we, um, if there hasn't been an explosion we jump to 150 where we clear the screen. Now uh, this is where I set up a um, system for uh, going through the position of the uh, aliens on the screen. It goes from 1, starts at 0 obviously, then gets uh, C equals C plus 1 all the way through to 42 and then goes back to 0. So there's actually 20 positions moving along going towards the right. At position 21, or counter value 21, it then moves everything down the screen. This is the scrolling down Joseph's Retro Bits trick and then we um, go down here and if the if C is less than 21 we print the insert string which shifts everything to the right and then we go to 180 if it doesn't do that so if it's greater than that we then print uh, J2 which is the, the delete it goes through and deletes um, use that delete function I explained previously which then shifts everything back to the left except of course at 42 where we've actually gone all the way across and back at this point it, it resets back to zero and scrolls down again so that controls movement to the right down movement to the left down again okay so uh, this is if we fired a missile then we go through uh, the actual coding to shoot the missile which is a, another sprite and we'll go into that a little bit more later but here we're now going to capture the keyboard and the joystick values so whether you're using keyboard or joystick it doesn't matter it'll read both and the uh, the zip commands will uh, read either the keyboard or the uh, joystick and then increment the x value or decrement depending on if you're going right or left uh, the position of the, uh, the ship that you saw down the bottom of the screen this guy here which is a sprite and these are just if we've hit the far right. In fact, for gameplay reasons, it doesn't allow you to go all the way to the, to the right because you can kind of hide there to some extent. So it prevents you from hiding from the um, downward movement of the aliens. I've put some limits on how far you can move, or so you can't go all the way right and all the way left. So if you get to an X value greater than 255, which would obviously uh, cause an error, it then throws it back to 255. Less than 99 goes back up to 100. Now we're seeing if the fire button 
or key is pressed and in which case we uh, say uh, set the FY value to 210 that's uh, the Y position on the screen for the sprite uh, once that's set to a value it also means uh, it's uh, triggering the, the routine to process that uh, firing of the missile and it also sets the X value for the missile to be the current X value of the, uh, the sprite, the, the spaceship. We then go and set the uh, position of the spaceship and if a missile has been fired, so FY is greater than zero, so I've, I've, as I've explained here, once the value for FY has been set, it'll go and move the missile. If the FY value is minus one, then that means that um, there's been a collision detection and we're going to show a bit of an explosion on the screen to uh, delete some of the characters of the aliens. Okay, this is the uh, peak to detect if there's a, been a collision and if it has it will uh, go to 1600. So this is a collision between the ship and the aliens. And that's the basic main loop of the code. From here it goes back up to 120 and goes through this again. So the routines called here is um, this is uh, Joseph's uh, trick to scroll down the screen. Uh, this prints the header and uh, got some collision detection here that's part of the motion of the missile. The FY, the Y value on the screen for the missile, is uh, decremented by nine, sorry, 14 until it gets to 75, in which case FY value is then set back to zero, effectively disabling the missile. And this is this somewhat convoluted formula gives me a screen location um, where uh, the sprite was when the collision was detected. This is kind of important because this is uh, I need this value in the on the screen memory so I can uh, clear out the uh, all the characters for the alien. Before I cleared out those alien characters, I uh, d uh, set up a bit of an explosion first. And here we um, BP is a value that uh, uh, sets the pitch for the explosion sound. I've got uh, the ex I use the same explosion sound routine based on whether the missile collides with the alien or whether the spaceship collides with the alien. Uh, so it's got a bit of a different bang sound and effect. So this is now where we're going to uh, use that variable, this variable where I've calculated the uh, screen memory location of where the sprite collided with the, uh, the sprite of the missile, sorry, collided with one of the aliens and it'll just poke to that location a uh, bunch of explosion looking type characters set the color to is it red or an orange or a pink I'm not sure I think it's light red or something and then we uh, once that's been set we set the FY value back to minus one indicating that we've got the explosion uh, we increase our score by 10 we uh, clear the um, location or clear the sprite by moving it out of the uh, visible screen area and um, that's when we also go back up to this FY value greater than zero so if we've um, if it's not greater than zero that means we've had uh, an ex uh, in fact with the missile and the sprites and this is uh, where after we've displayed all the characters for the explosion we then need to clear them again and that's basically it everything else is going to be um, like with uh, the characters which I've shown you before, the intro screen, uh, the sound and the sprite data. So let's see what all this looks like. I've disabled the sound just so it doesn't get too annoying. So as you can see the animation based on all those characters um, that I've set up are just being rendered to the screen giving us all the, the motion and the sprites are, are used for the ship and the missile 
and the pokes to the screen memory are giving us the explosion between the missile and our aliens and the trick of this game is just to destroy all these aliens before they come down and make contact with our spaceship I didn't go as far as including any ability for the aliens to fire back that would have put too much load on the game I am here was to see what I can do within the basic interpreter uh, I have compiled this and it runs super fast as I'm sure you can imagine and there's certainly scope to make this into a bit more of a game um, if uh, you wanted to um, I'm using the boss basic compiler and um, it will require a bit of tweaking with the code because it does introduce a few glitches but nothing that I'm sure can't be uh, fixed pretty easily so yeah this could be expanded into a um, quite an interesting game if, uh, if someone wants to take it a step further I've just wanted to see what I can do with it as far as keeping it within Commodore 64's uh, internal basic interpreter but one interesting thing I found is that if I just um, sit there and press a space key, and in fact I've added an auto fire routine and don't actually uh, move the spaceship, firstly it's uh, you don't get too bad a score of playing the game, but one curious thing is that the score tends to vary, but there is no actual change in the gameplay and it should logically produce the same score at the end of the day but it doesn't and I don't know why so if anyone out there has any idea um, feel free to download it I'll, uh, I'll have a, a link to it in the comments below give it a try now this uh, has occurred on the real hardware and also the um, uh, vice emulator so very strange let me know what you think uh, like, like and subscribe and all that. Thanks for watching.